wait for it. There is so much time together. There she is. Kinze. I always love driving past that. We're going to pull home some uh, Brent 657 uh, gravity wagons. I went and they're used uh, and stuff, but I went and checked them out last week, or two weeks ago, they were good. Uh, I just didn't have time to pull them home, so I got Spencer behind me. I got kind of a hitch pin fiasco. I just brought as many hitch pins as possible. We'll figure out which one works there. We're gonna make a stop at Deer and see if we can't get uh, just a little bigger hitch pin. I have a couple, but I think they're a little. They need to be a little bigger. I have the uh, I have the hitch pin size I need, but I think it's in the tractor, which is a ways away. Well, we got one hooked up. Spence is gonna hook up the other. We were thinking about pulling them both, but we got two trucks, so we we're like, better safe than sorry. So we're gonna split them up here. Oh, does that actually work? Oh. That Okay, here we go, 90 miles. Man, one of the things about kind of getting started farming and stuff is you're buying equipment and stuff, you're buying a lot of equipment, but you're meeting all sorts of people from all over Iowa and it's just cool to hear about their farm and hear about like how they farm and their location and it's just fun talking to a lot of different people that I meet just when I purchase like the combine, the tractor, now these gravity wagons. Is it Chevy handling her fun? We gotta get on the road, see what she does. This is gonna be really nice when we're harvesting, if we wanna drop a cart, not run two at a time, Yeah. so that you, so then the combine never runs out. Cause Everything seems to be good. We're gonna keep going and then uh, we might stop for food or something at a gas station. Okay, let's see how fast we can get going without it bouncing too much back there. You still feel it though, right? Uh, I don't feel it. I mean you feel a little bit back there. It's gonna shake of course, but I mean, these, It's pretty smooth. They seem to be doing good back there. We're running down uh, Highway 30 here. I think it's, it's pretty smooth Doing 50 made it back here and uh, What we're gonna do is I'm gonna get the tractor it's kind of tough to get turned around with these things. I had to pull in a spot and then back up on the roadway without anybody seeing. Luckily, Spencer was sitting on the roadway. And uh, I'm gonna get the tractor hooked into this. Spencer's running it to the other farm. And then we're gonna pair these together and then we'll just have the tractor paired to those and it's out of here because the shed site right now, I just want to get everything out of here because these guys are still gonna put in side walls and stuff and it's gonna be kind of tough storing everything back there for now. So we'll get it all out of here. Hey, they just poured concrete too. I guess I haven't showed you guys the shed. We'll walk through it, but first I gotta get going and we gotta run these back here. Oh, we gotta sketch something in it. We got her connected and I just gotta figure out a way to get her turned around here. Spencer the plan is to get him backed up and then try and back this one up connect it that way where everything's out of the way for the builders and it's on all on a different farm here we go Smith TV let's see if we can do this I got stuck with these wagons I was turning around one spot and it's kind of tough to get them backed up with a pickup but uh, he's gonna it's gonna take him a couple tries here <laughs> he's trying to figure out which way to turn there you go there you go keep going Good, now pull full straight forward. There you go. And we're gonna try to get it kind of a ways back there in front of that planter. <laughs> there you go. Hey, good, good, right there, stop. All that far. up and farms him, it's still hard, but it's not this hard. You know, that, that's, that's tough with a pickup yeah. truck though. Probably with the tractor you can crank it a lot harder with the front wheels or for now just. Well, I back it up even better. Well, what's yeah. the tractor plug in? The tractor plug in is just, just, just yeah, yeah, you don't need that. All right, Grant's got to back it all the way up into the driveway, connect it there. We'll see if he can do it. Good thing we built this driveway like 40 feet wide. Looks like he's struggling already. That's pretty tough.
Got a long way to go. He's just gotta go straight though. Check that out. That was a little struggle backing that up. So these are the uh, Brent 657s. It's a 2013 model. And uh, the guy I bought it off of, they didn't use it too much because they had another semi and two semis and he was ready to sell it. Anyways, he was, uh, he had them up on Facebook Marketplace. I sell them, I went and took a look at them last week. And then uh, I was like, okay, I'll take them. And we came and picked them up today. But they actually come like brand new with a 425 truck tires like used truck tires i think the thought of that is there like when they come out of factory like guys aren't going to put many miles to actually wear down those tires there's no need to buy brand new truck tires so they have used truck tires that come off of uh i think they're called the super single trucks um so brent makes i think they only make a 557 657 and 757 and the 757 the kind of thought behind going with 657 is the 757 has the it has the exact same frame and and even will have the same tires sometimes you can get uh dual semi tires on them but some will run 757 exact same frame besides this hole in the hundred more bushel so the 657 has four brakes all the way around and it's built like a 757 besides you just can't fill 100 more bushel so thinking that way this is probably th thinking through that way this is probably like the best made one is my kind of thought as four uh I think it's drum brakes, four drum brakes on it. They're just surge. So when that gravity wagon has all the weight in it and it pushes into the tractor, it's gonna engage those brakes through the brake line, send those brakes, and then all the way on the back brakes too, it'll engage those back brakes. Now, the thing about, you could have went with like a 557 or a 550 bushel wagon, but on the 500 bushel wagons, they have only rear brakes. So they have technically two brakes, whereas the 657s have four whole brakes. So they're, I don't know, I just thought it was kind of the best one to go with for size comparison and stuff unlike the shed farm the farm where we're building the shed that's a mile from the elevator so if i'm by myself i could just set them there dump into a mall fill them all like 1200 bushel full or 1300 bushel full and then just take to the elevator just a mile down the road so i was thinking at one point you know do you go to a semi i could get like a grain truck i thought about getting a grain truck but with these they're just so simple and maintenance wise and they hold their value really well so if i want to go to a semi or grain truck in the future, I'm not throwing any money into these as we go along like the next couple of years or anything like that. And then they're probably gonna hold their value pretty darn well. So that was kind of my thought here. I think they'll be pretty nice and handy. Uh, the only, on one of my farms, the bottom farm, for about a quarter of a mile, it's got a couple small rolling hills. So on that farm for sure, I'm thinking you can't pull two at a time. We'll just pull one at a time through there. We're gonna be doing some mowing and uh, some walking of beans today, I think, and a little bit of spraying yet. These weeds and grass around my planter and cultivator have become a mess, and I sprayed these uh, a couple days ago, but it rained like two hours after, so I don't think it, it got a good killing, so I'm gonna spray it again. And then we're gonna do some mowing and try to keep this clean. And then I got some volunteer corn coming up through here that I, I actually went out and uh, dug a lot of the volunteer corn out, I don't know, probably two weeks ago. There was a lot over there that me and Russell actually planted to test the planter, so I had to go dig that out. But then there's just, there's a lot of volunteer corn just popping up through here. This area got hit a little bit by the derecho, so uh, I think some of the corn was down and it's kind of coming up now. It didn't get hit crazy hard, but it it got hit a little from what I've talked to past farmers from last year, so. This should be able to do everything I need to do, I think.
Spence went to mow way down at the bottom while I just sat and enjoyed a nice lunch. So I think I'm gonna try and switch some spots so he can uh, eat some lunch here and then. I think we're gonna try and walk some beans this afternoon here and get, uh, get some of that volunteer corn out of there. How was it? Good, what do you want me to do now? I kinda... Do you wanna switch? I ate lunch. It's got a nice AC in here. Gosh darn, that's... It's nice. <laughs> We're gonna try and go after some of this volunteer corn out here. So here's what we got so far for the building. Got the roof on, cement poured now. Obviously all the trusses hanged, everything like that. There's really, there's kind of a lot of stuff to do, honestly. I feel like, I feel like it's almost done, but there's still a lot of stuff we gotta add to it. Concrete was poured two days ago. Maybe I'm just a freak, but I kinda just wanna stay off of it. Looks like my good buddies were on it. All my animals around here. In case you guys are new or like haven't seen it or haven't updated, we're building a machine shed that like this is the first building that I will have on a farm. 60 by 120, it's gonna be cold storage and it'll always stay cold storage. With 16 foot four inch sidewalls is what we got on the sides. The reason they do that is so when you put concrete in there, you're five, six inches of concrete, when you hang the actual doors, because the doors are gonna be 16 foot high exactly, that way everything matches up. So they build the sidewalls just a little taller, obviously, to like 16 foot, four inches. And then we got a, uh, then we have a 30 by 16 foot door. So it'll be 30 long, 16 foot high door on that side. I actually have ordered a, uh, I don't know what you wanna call it, just a 30, let's see, 30 wide by 25 foot pad coming out front. My thought with that one was, when it's nice out, it'll be nice to just put equipment on here and kind of work on it outside if you need to, or wash stuff outside, because I will have water here, so that was kind of my thought of the pad. It is kind of weird spending money on concrete that's gonna go outside of the building when you don't have the whole building finished with concrete, because right now we have technically 64 out of the 120 we have about 64 foot of concrete in here. So so what, we have 56 foot of what will be rock. So essentially we have to come in now and since they poured concrete, we gotta add about five more inches of rock to completely fill this space up. My thought with kind of leaving this rock instead of cementing the whole thing was, I mean, if this is cold storage, 99% of the time you're gonna have equipment sitting on this spot. So I kind of felt there's no need for concrete and heck, the equipment's probably gonna come like all the way out to here. In a real, in a perfect world, I'd love to have all the equipment sitting on gravel and have like the cement open. That's not gonna happen. It's gonna fill up so quick. But uh, hopefully we can use like one of these corners for kind of shop space. It won't be heated, but kind of just shop space for when you're working on stuff. And one thought was, I wanna kind of have maybe a camper in here. So, I don't know, maybe I can get some small old camper and put it in kind of this corner, that way, busy seasons, you can just sleep in there, wake up in your shed, stuff like that. So with all those ideas, like, it's gonna take up a lot of space. And I shouldn't say it, but when I'm walking around, this does feel a little small. I'm thinking I should've went bigger. What do you think, Spence? Are you willing to pay more to make it bigger? No. We were already talking about putting the cultivator outside. Yeah. <laughs> Put it back behind the shed. And then I do have, uh, it would be three windows coming for it. So I'm thinking a window right there. If we can fit a window in the slider, window right there. Where's the door gone? Door, I think right there. And then maybe another window on that side. This is a uh, 24 foot, I have four, 24 foot by 14. So unfortunately you couldn't put a 16 foot door there. 
So if we have anything that can't fit in a 14, we'll just pull it through the main big door over there. I wasn't too big on the side door, but some people talked me into it. It was like, uh, I wasn't sure if you really needed it, but we'll see. It might come in handy for light and stuff like that. One thing I want to do is get some good lights in here. That'd be nice. A couple people were asking who actually built this building, and it was uh, Griner Buildings out of Washington, Iowa. So they have a couple offices, or they have a couple of sites. I think they have one in Illinois, one in Washington, Iowa, and then one in Des Moines, I think. That's who built this. They were, well, so far, we're halfway through. They're awesome to work with. They put this up quick. The day we got done building this pad, they were in here digging uh, post holes. The day after that, they're cementing into the post holes, putting the post holes. Then it was a Saturday. By Monday, by Monday or Tuesday, it felt like they were putting on trusses and hanging trusses already. Like, they just went quick. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention, the color scheme. So the roof is more of like a brownish and the side of it is gonna be more like a, a clayish color. So it's gonna, it's kind of a new type color that you may see on a lot of newer buildings coming out. I was considering doing like the classic farm red and white, but I decided to go with like a, a brownish and then a clayish. I thought that looked pretty cool too. So it's nothing fancy. It's cold storage. I don't have any uh, overhangs or any, uh, what do you call them, kalupas or something like that. The little house, huts, I call them on the top or anything that make it look fancy. So it's nothing crazy, but I don't know. It'll be, it'll be perfect. It'll be perfect for what we need. Seriously guys, thanks for watching this video. I, I do really appreciate it. So thank you. We'll see you guys in the next one.